now to discuss Kaltbaum Capital Management President Gary Kaltbaum, Moody's Chief Capital Markets Economist John Lonsky, and Wall Street Journal's Shelby Holiday. Guys, I'm going to delve into this even a little bit further. Last month, the labor force, black, 131,000 black Americans entered the labor force, 95,000 more were employed. 126,000 more Hispanics entered the labor force, 146,000 of them were more employed. 114,000 women entered the labor force last month, 138,000 net employed. High school, high school only graduates, 484,000 entered the job market, 507,000 of them got jobs. Shelby, this is a remarkable number. It is remarkable. I'm glad you're pointing it out, too, because it's kind of flying under the radar of the overall picture. Those are some very impressive numbers. I would expect we hear Trump talking about those numbers uh, in the future. He's coming up on rallies. I would expect him to hammer on that. I think Republicans want him to hammer on that. The economy, as Deirdre said, is very strong right now. And there are some mixed messages in terms of, you know, everyone can cherry pick a jobs report. But I do think that the president tends to distract from his own strong economy sometimes, and Republicans heading into the midterms certainly hope he gets focused. I know there was an op-ed by one of your colleagues at the Journal, right, uh, Kim Strassel, who kind she of... called it whiffing. Whiffing. So a lot of people are talking about that today. There's no doubt about that. I mean, listen, I would be preaching this stuff all day long, John, uh, and not just this, but he's going into the heartland over the weekend, manufacturing jobs. Mm. Way up. It's incredible. Over the past 12 months, we've had the steepest percentage increase by factory jobs since 1984. Those are the days of Ronald Reagan, and in 1984, the real economy grew by more more than seven percent. So can we, I mean, is it too lofty a goal? I know it's early in the Atlanta Fed saying this quarter five percent. We know that's going to change a lot, but I mean, what do you, what do you make? I mean, is it now, can we start to really believe three, four percent is possible down the road? Does that really matter that much? I'll take 3% growth. Very happy with that. But I think early in the show, you brought on the important fact, and that is people who have been down and out of the labor force, not getting jobs, are finally able to get jobs. As the Fed chairman said, if you're looking for a job today, chances are very high that you're going to find one. That wasn't true three, five years ago. And not just that, but wages are ticking up, and they're starting to, it's starting, you know, it could be, it is seen as sluggish, but they are growing, and it's ramping up quicker than it was earlier. So hopefully that trend continues. People make more money. You know, Gary, 176,000 fewer people worked part-time last month because of economic reasons. So they are, you know, we're seeing that shift. It's a remarkable shift, and the market seems to be okay with this number. Uh, look, I'd love to complain about something, but I really can't right now. <laughs> Uh, the 157 should be better, but a couple of things that uh, are not talked about enough. 3.9 percent unemployment. Two years ago, that would have been a dream. You have 156 million people now working. I believe that's a record. You covered a lot of those numbers also, but for me, the biggest number is the number of people on welfare continues to crash continues to drop. These are people not living off the taxpayer, but now producing because they're in jobs. And as long as these things continue, nothing but a virtuous cycle. But we need to stay on top of it, never get too full of ourselves. And when things are going good, the White House should be paranoid to make sure it continues to go good. Well, I think President Trump surrounded himself with the right people, uh, you know, because uh, Cutler and those guys, they're not going to be complacent. Wilbur Ross, he'll never be complacent, I don't think. But, Shelby, I do believe that this whole also gets back to, to pol the world politics in the sense that we had these tax cuts. We see we're going through an amazing corporate earnings season. This second quarter is better than anyone anticipated. Uh, and so one of the complaints is that, well, yeah, corporate America has benefited. The wealthy has benefited. Mm. But when you see this many people with just only high school diplomas come into the workforce and find jobs. That means the same tide is lifting all ships. It does. And I also think it's interesting that, and back to the point of whether or not the White House can really capitalize on this message, tax cuts, as much as they have benefited people, are still seen as unpopular. They're still polling unpopularly in, in various polls. And so it'll be interesting to see if the Republicans, and particularly the White House, can come out and really emphasize how great that has been for people, how great it has been for jobs. I think anybody working right now, anybody getting a raise, has got to be feeling pretty good in some sense, oh, especially absolutely. if they haven't Charles, been in the workforce absolutely. and they are now re-entering. Charles, I, I would be running ads if I was the White House 24-7 
on Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi wanting uh, tax hikes. I would be running video from Venezuela for all these socialists that are coming out of the woodwork saying that's the way to greatness. Uh, this should be pretty damn easy considering socialism sucks and capitalism is what takes people out of poverty and has done the great job throughout the ages. Uh, I, I am hoping they do that and do that very loud and very clear.